Lighting with fire. As the cinematographer on Salem, I used fire as a source on a daily basis. In this video, I'll share what I learned in the use of candles, torches, lanterns, and fireplaces to light a 17th century period piece. Fire is bright to the eye, but the light it casts does not project very far. That's because it's made up of unfocused and oblique light rays. In other words, it's disorganized. If you haven't tried using fire as a lighting source, the first campfire scene you shoot may require a very fast lens or an unusually high ISO setting. Because of these limiting factors, it took until 1975 for Hollywood to actually photograph a scene lit entirely by candlelight. The film is Stanley Kubrick's epic Barry Lyndon. Notice how close the candelabra is to Marissa Berenson. Cinematographer John Alcott photographed this gambling scene with an amazingly fast f.7 50mm lens, special candles with multiple wicks, and a one-stop force development of his 100 ISO tungsten color negative. How fast is an f.7 lens? 2.8 2, 1, 4, 1, and f.7. Most of us don't have lenses that are faster than a 2.8. At this f-stop, a single wick candle won't provide much illumination on your subject. But with a small, 15-watt bulb tucked into the back of a candle, you can add extra light without giving away the source. Connect an inexpensive household dimmer and precisely set a realistic intensity. The bulb, socket, dimmer, and cord cost less than $20. Here's why the extra light is needed. At 800 ISO, with a gray card one inch from the flame, the spot meter reads a 5.6. But at two inches away, the reading is 2.8, a dramatic fall off of four times less light. What happens if fire is collimated? Meaning, the light rays are organized into parallel beams. It first happened in 1823, when physicist Louis Fresnel designed a lens to magnify an oil flame in a lighthouse along the French coast. The results were game-changing. Here is what occurred, though on a much smaller scale. This old brass flashlight is fitted with a simple Fresnel lens. Check this out. The Fresnel lens quickly became the integral optical component of early movie lights, and remains so today. Most scenes require at least one shot that ties the actor in with the fire source. But when the fire is off camera, you can create the look of fire with movie lights. With three small Fresnel instruments, we can create a bright, realistic fire effect without the heat and noise. There are many brands of flicker boxes and they all require more than one light to get a realistic effect. This one is set up for three lights and is infinitely adjustable. Here's how it works. All right, so here I am on the first circuit. So that's gonna be the low mark for this, and then the high mark is all the way up. And then let's set the low mark midway here, and the high mark all the way up. So that's sort of a different look. Let's keep this, the third lamp all the way down and then we'll bring this up, okay? So it's going all the way out. And then if we want to slow the whole thing down, we just move the delay. And these four dip switches are in fire effect too, which I like. There's other things you can do with them. That's slightly different. Let's 
sort of a chase there, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And then if they're all up, then you get nothing. The fire lit shot required a much higher ISO. And to me, it looks mushy and red compared to the lustrous quality of the Fresnel lamps. The flicker might be a bit off, but as we've seen, that's easily adjusted. Here are some final thoughts on lighting with fire.